Mathematics class 8th, chapter 3rd, exercise 3.4, chapter name Understanding Quadrilaterals. Here we are on question number 1st. State whether true or false. We are given different parts from A to H and we have to find whether the given statements are true or false. If we notice at the first glance, here all the questions are starting with all. As you see here, all rectangles are squares, all rhombuses are parallelograms, so on. In every question, statement starts from all. So in these type of questions, a very basic concept follows, which we are going to illustrate now. Take an example of gold. If we say all gold are metals. In this statement, if we want to know whether all gold are metals, we must first of all know the property of metals. That is, they are ductile. They can be drawn into sheets, that is they are malleable, they have certain boiling temperature and certain melting temperature and they follow some certain types of properties. Then only we will be able to consider whether gold is a metal. With this idea, we shall try to solve all these statement questions which contains all as the initial word in all these statements. Again, prior diving into the question, let's understand the concept that we have learned in this particular exercise 3.4. Of understanding quadrilaterals. If you consider this figure, this figure is called Venn diagram which you shall study in subsequent chapters. So we have studied about quadrilaterals. What are quadrilaterals? A two-dimensional figure which is entirely made up of line segments and the number of line segments should be four and they must make a closed polygon. So all these figures that is kites, trapezoids, isosceles trapezoids, Trapezoids is just the another name of trapezium. It is just the different names called in different nations. And parallelograms again, they are quadrilaterals because they are made up of four line segments, rhombuses, squares, rectangles. All these concepts or all these two dimensional figure that you have studied comes under the major classification of quadrilaterals. We have studied parallelograms, which is a special type of quadrilateral. Again, squares which are again parallelograms and again quadrilaterals so square can also be termed as rectangle square can also be termed as rhombuses again rectangles are parallelograms and again rectangles are quadrilaterals so this is the classification of different figures that we have learned so far in our study of quadrilaterals with this idea let's try to solve a part it says all rectangles are squares. So as we discussed here that whatever is given after R, we have to first find its properties. So we have drawn square here and we know very well that a figure is termed as square if all of its four sides are equal to each other. And if you consider a case of rectangle which do not have all four line segments equal to each other, then this statement goes wrong. Therefore, we termed it as false statement because all rectangles can never be squares. There can be some rectangles which can be square because the definition of rectangle is each internal angle is equal to 90 degrees and also a pair of opposite sides are parallel and equal to each other. So if we consider a rectangle whose pair of opposite sides are different than different pair of opposite sides, then this statement goes wrong. All rectangles are not squares. Therefore, we wrote it as false statement. With this idea, we shall try to solve rest of the questions. B part. All rhombuses are parallelograms. Well, the very definition of rhombuses says, a rhombus has all the properties of a parallelogram. Therefore, this statement is true. But for a better understanding, we shall try to explain it in this Venn diagram. Here, we have categorized as rhombus. And it comes under parallelograms. Therefore, indeed, all rhombuses will always be parallelograms and the concept goes like this as we told you in statement questions where first word is all we just consider the word which is written after r so parallelograms what are the properties of parallelogram in case of parallelogram we have opposite sides equal to each other and also parallel to each other also diagonals bisect each other in case of rhombuses all these properties that we just described of parallelograms follows because here is the representation of a rhombus and pair of opposite sides are parallel to each other 
and also equal to each other and diagonals bisect each other in case of rhombuses, which follows the properties of parallelogram. Therefore, we say a rhombus has all the properties of a parallelogram. That completes our B part. Moving on to C part. All squares are rhombuses and also rectangles. So we will first try to know the properties of rhombuses and rectangles. Rhombuses we just discussed. What about rectangles? Well, rectangles have all of its internal angles equals to 90 degree and pair of opposite sides are equal to each other. But not necessarily all the four sides should be equal to each other. And diagonals are equal in length and bisect each other. Well, if you try to find the properties of square, square has all these properties of rhombuses and rectangles. Therefore, in case of Venn diagram, it coincides rhombuses and rectangles. That is, a square can be termed as rhombus and rectangle as well. With this, this statement holds true. That is, all squares are rhombuses and also rectangles. Therefore, true for C part. Moving on to D part. All squares are not parallelograms. Well, if you observe here, square comes inside parallelograms. Therefore, this statement holds false. That is, all squares are not parallelograms. For a better understanding, let's focus on this thing. Parallelograms. Pair of opposite line segments are equal to each other and parallel to each other. Whereas in case of squares, it holds true. Pair of opposite line segments are equal to each other and also parallel to each other. In case of parallelograms, diagonals bisect each other. Same is the case with square. Diagonals bisect each other. Therefore, this statement holds false that all squares are not parallelograms. It should be all squares are parallelograms. And we are just describing this figure of rhombus as parallelogram because rhombuses are also parallelograms that we just discussed in previous parts. With this, we can clearly state that D part is false. Talking about E part, all kites are rhombuses. Here is the representation of kite and a rhombus. The major difference between kite and rhombus is this, that in case of kite, the consecutive line segment are equal to each other. However, in case of rhombus, all the four line segments are equal to each other. So this is the only difference between kite and rhombuses. Therefore, this statement is false because all kites can never be rhombuses. They are two different things. A kite cannot have all its four line segments equal to each other. If it happens so, it will be termed as rhombus. Therefore, this statement is false, that all kites are rhombuses. F part. All rhombuses are kites. Let's focus on kites. It says, consecutive line segments are equal to each other. Also, in case of rhombus, consecutive pairs are equal. Again, let's focus on kites. Diagonals make 90 degrees when they cross each other. In rhombuses, when diagonals cross, they make 90 degrees. So indeed, this statement will always follow true. That is, all rhombuses are kites. Because the diagonals of rhombus are perpendicular bisectors of one another. With this, F part is true. G part. All parallelograms are trapeziums. What is a trapezium? These are the figures of trapeziums. That is, only one pair of opposite sides need to be parallel. Another pair of sides should not be parallel to each other. Whereas in case of parallelograms, both pairs should be parallel to each other. Therefore, this statement will always be false. Because if you consider in Venn diagrams, trapezium and parallelograms do not coincide each other because they have different properties. Therefore, G part is false. Although the textbook answer says true, but it will be false because the definition that is provided to us for the trapezium is only one pair of opposite sides need to be parallel because if these sides become parallel and it will be called as parallelograms, then what is the use of giving a particular name for such type of figures whose only one pair of opposite sides are parallel to each other as trapezium. Therefore, all parallelograms are trapezium is a false statement because these both things are entirely different based upon the definition. H part. All squares are trapeziums. Again, definition of trapezium says only one pair should be parallel. Whereas in case of square, both pairs are parallel to each other. Therefore, we can say a trapezium has exactly one pair. The important word over here is one pair of parallel sides. A square has two pairs of parallel sides. Therefore, this statement 
will again be false that all squares are trapeziums. With this, each part is solved. The main thing that we have learned in such type of statement questions where all is the initial word of the statement is this, that we have to focus on the word which is written after R. We have to find its property and match those properties with the initial word which is written after all. And in order to solve such questions in a fast manner, Venn diagram plays a vital role. These statement questions are confusing initially, but if you know the properties well, then this confusion eliminates and this will come with practice. That is, you have to make all these properties your muscle memory in order to tackle such type of questions. With this, our first question of exercise 3.4, chapter 3rd, mathematics class 8th, understanding quadrilaterals has been solved.